Now, moving on to Israel. Israel was reportedly threatening to withdraw its ambassador from the United States this week as funding was frozen for the Iron Dome. The Iron Dome missile defense system, as you know, protects Israel from rockets by Hamas in Gaza, and it works by intercepting them midair. It's unbelievable technology for which we're all very grateful. There was a vote in the United States House which overwhelmingly passed and it approved legislation to provide $1 billion to Israel to restock its Iron Dome. Iron Dome is a purely defensive system designed to safeguard all civilians living in Israel. This system was co-developed by the United States and Israel and has saved thousands of lives. Passage of this bill reflects the great unity in Congress on a bipartisan and bicameral basis for Israel's security. Far-left radical Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez cried while changing her vote from no to present. And that means that she did not vote yes or no. AOC can be seen in the corner there, even having to be comforted after changing her vote. She then wrote a long letter to her constituents on Friday, saying she opposed funding for the Iron Dome because of persistent human rights abuses against Palestinians. This is, of course, utterly absurd. This is about protecting people from a terrorist attack, from rockets. And I don't know how supporting saving lives could possibly make someone cry. It is nonsense. You can't in any stretch support rocket fire on Israel. It's disgraceful. But look at this. This is AOC just two years ago in an interview with PBS showing her poor grasp of foreign policy. What people are starting to see, at least in, in the occupation uh, of, of Palestine, is um, just an, an increasing crisis of humanitarian condition. And that, to me, is just where I tend to mm -hmm. come from on this issue. You use the term the occupation of Palestine. Mm. What did oh. you mean by that? Oh, um, I think what I meant is like the the settlements that are increasing in, in some of these areas and, and places where, um, where Palestinians are experiencing uh, difficulty in access to uh, their housing and homes. Do you think you can expand on that? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd also just, I, I am not the expert on geopolitics on this issue, you know? Yeah, definitely not an expert. Meanwhile, the United Nations is considering a request from the Taliban to address world leaders, nominating Suhail Shaheen as Afghanistan's UN ambassador. Afghanistan that gave protection to terrorists even after September 11. And now back in control, the Taliban has carried out a series of assassinations and on Saturday hanged four men from cranes. Joining me now to discuss this is Executive Director of UN Watch, Hilal Nua. Hilal, great to see you again. Let's start with the Taliban's effort to be part of the United Nations. How can the UN even consider legitimising this terrorist group? Look, Shari, it's outrageous that the very terrorist group that carried out, uh, that collaborated with Al-Qaeda, that harboured, aided and abetted Al-Qaeda terrorists that carried out the 9-11 terrorist attacks against the World Trade Center in New York, killing 3,000 innocent people, that that group would now be considered in New York City by the United Nations to, be, to receive credentials and recognition and legitimacy is absolutely outrageous. It's unconscionable. And let's keep in mind that the moment that the Taliban win UN recognition, they inherit the Afghan seat on the UN Commission on the Status of Women, that's the highest UN Women's Rights Commission. The Taliban will be members of that. They'll also become members of the Executive Board of UNESCO, which is the UN Agency for Education, Science and Culture, which includes protecting world heritage sites. And the Taliban, of course, are the ones who infamously 20 years ago bombed the Buddha Bamiyan statues, the 1500 year old statues of Buddha. Uh, they blew them up and they would become one of the uh, defenders of World Heritage Sites. So this is really absolutely unconscionable. Hello, I want to ask you about AOC. 
and this movement by p people like her, uh, and, and luckily <coughs> it's, it's only a small element of the Democratic Party that don't want to protect Israel from terror attacks? Well, it's, uh, I think, very sad and a betrayal of progressive values. Progressive values are supposed to be protecting human rights, promoting peace. The Iron Dome defense system that was under review this week at Congress to replenish Israel's stocks after more than 4,000 Hamas rockets were fired at Israeli civilians. The Iron Dome defends civilians against rockets. It shoots down rockets. It's, it's a miracle. And the notion that AOC and her colleagues, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, who claim to be progressive and humanitarian, would be doing something that eliminates defense for civilians and effectively empowers terrorists, Hamas, to murder civilians is truly unbelievable. And it's a betrayal of their principles. It shows a, a, an irrational hatred of Israel and I dare say perhaps an irrational hatred of Jews. Yeah, it, it certainly looks that way. I mean, speaking of this anti-Semitic anti -Semitic movement, it has even infected parts of the United Nations. The United Nations has held a series of conferences marking the anniversary of the Durban Conference. Uh, and this is one UN body that has effectively turned into an anti-Semitic forum. What happened this week when the UN General Assembly reaffirmed the 2001 Durban Declaration that specifically singled out Israel as an, as an alleged perpetrator of racism? And how many countries uh, have now boycotted it, in large part, thanks to your work, Hillel? Thank you, Sherry. Look, uh, in 2001, days before the 9-11 terrorist attacks, we had a foreshadowing of what was to come when at a world conference on racism in post-apartheid South Africa, meant to herald in a new century and a new way of thinking to combat racism. Instead, instead of being a conference of racism in Durban, South Africa, it turned into a conference of racism, a conference that incited anti-Semitism. There was Holocaust denial literature being circulated. Hitler was being praised. There were marches uh, attacking Israel and Jews. And as you said in the declaration, adopted by the countries, only one nation, Israel, was singled out as supposed racist. So this kind of demonization was the iconic, I would say, anti-Semitic event on the international scene. And those of us who are combating anti-Semitism see it as, one, as a traumatic event. And the notion that the UN would once again, this is the third time that they're commemorating and really celebrating this event, is uh, uh, offensive to the UN's founding principles, which are anti racism or meant to be anti-racism. Thankfully, as you indicated, a record 38 countries pulled out. And now in 2001, two countries pulled out, just the US and Israel. In 2009, 10 countries pulled out, including Australia. 2011, 14 countries pulled out. And this week, I'm very happy to say, thanks to our campaign and the work of many others, 38 countries pulled out, leading democracies, Australia, Canada, Britain, France, Germany, the Netherlands, the US, you go you know, across the line, Italy, even Sweden, country that has never pulled out of the UN conference in its history pulled out. So this shows that the so-called anti-racism conference, the Durban Four, was a sham and the UN needs to recognize it. They need to uh, get past the Durban declaration. They need to find okay. another uh, way to rally the world in fighting racism. We could do that. Yeah.